Now, the mother of Becky Gordon Edwards said tonight that her fight for answers about her daughter's death would continue. Christopher Halliwell told police he killed her and guided them 30 miles to the farm where her body was buried. But he couldn't be convicted of her murder because he hadn't been properly cautioned. For Sean O'Callaghan's parents, though, today did finally bring justice, as our Home Affairs correspondent Andy Davies reports now from Bristol Crown Court. The police called him despicable. The judge said his actions had been truly horrifying to contemplate. But as Christopher Halliwell was sentenced to life imprisonment today for one murder, the scene outside court was of two families distraught, mourning the loss of two daughters. One grateful for justice today. Uh, it's been a, a very emotional day. Um, sorry. Um, as Elaine said, we've lost a beautiful girl in a most distressing way. However, justice has been done today. It's been an arduous journey, what we've got there. And justice, obviously, for Sean. But in an extraordinary case, no justice for the family of Becky Godden Edwards. After a very complicated and painful journey, over the last 18 months, Sean's family have today had the justice for the murder of their beautiful daughter. However, our family's fight for justice for Becky has only just begun. Sean O'Callaghan was 22, living in Swindon with her boyfriend Kevin. On the 18th of March last year, she was on a night out with friends. The last moments of her life are captured in these images as she leaves a nightclub just before three in the morning to head home. Her killer, Christopher Halliwell, a 47-year-old local taxi driver, has been circling the area for over half an hour. He sees Sean, drunk, weaving her way up the pavement. You can now see lights flashing. Halliwell has pulled over and put his hazards on. He takes just over a minute to persuade her to get in, and then heads off to a forest 15 miles out of Swindon. It would have been a horrific, terrifying journey for her, say the police, and a violent and brutal murder. I just want to say how very worried we are about Sean. As Sean's partner appealed for information and hundreds searched for her, the police breakthrough came on the fourth day. With CCTV, they'd identified Halliwell's car picking up Sean, the car in which he was now parading police appeals for information to find her. They put him under surveillance and then arrested him the next day in a supermarket car park. Immediately questioned, he said he didn't know where Sean was and he asked to see a solicitor. They began driving Halliwell back to the police station when suddenly a call came through from the man in charge of the investigation, Steve Fulcher. Stop, he told them. You've got to go somewhere else. It was a move which would have a profound impact on this case. Against his deputy's advice, Steve Fulcher told them to drive Halliwell to a remote hillside car park, where he thought Halliwell may have taken Sean. There he questioned him for nine minutes. Steve Fulcher should have cautioned Halliwell, reminding him of his right to silence, but he didn't. Fulcher addressed him directly. Are you going to tell me where Sean is? I don't know anything, replied Halliwell. At one point Halliwell said, you think I did it? I know you did it, replied Fulcher. Tell me where Sean is. Eventually, Halliwell broke. Have you got a car, he asked Fulcher. Let's go. Halliwell took them to Sean, to some woodland beside a country lane 13 miles from Swindon, where he dumped her body after sexually assaulting her, beating her, and stabbing her in the head and neck. And then asking for a quiet word with Steve Fulcher, he had more. I'm a sick f he said. Do you want another one? Fulcher again deliberately chose not to caution Halliwell, reluctant, as he would later put it, to interrupt the flow. They drove to a field 30 miles away in South Gloucestershire. Halliwell climbed over this wall and began walking into the field. He measured the distance into the field from the foot of the wall 
by placing one foot in front of another, carefully pacing it out until he stopped. The location of two bodies that have been identified to me uh, by this individual. It would turn out to be a young woman from Swindon who'd gone missing in 2002, Becky Godden Edwards. Her cousin recalls the moment they were told. When I walked in and I just seen my mum in a bundle on the floor and she was just crying her eyes out and I didn't know what was wrong. And as soon as I asked her, I, was, I just collapsed with her. Halliwell was initially charged with both murders, but in a hearing earlier this year, only reportable now, Steve Fulcher's actions in questioning Halliwell without cautioning him were deemed serious breaches of the law governing police conduct. The whole journey in which Halliwell led Fulcher to the bodies was ruled inadmissible evidence. The murder charge relating to Becky was dropped. Fulcher has since been suspended as the IPCC investigate his actions. In your view, did Steve Fulcher do the right thing? Definitely, yeah. Why are you so sure about that? Um, otherwise, we'd still be looking for Becky now, and we wouldn't have a clue. Um, and we'd have lived our whole life in hope, and we wouldn't have even have to... We wouldn't have had a choice to have put her to rest. And I would like to thank everyone for their continued support <laughs> in striving for justice for Becky. I won't be answering any questions and there will be no further comments at this time but I would like to say I would like the full support of you all to help me get justice for my daughter Becky. Thank you. Thank you. Deprived so cruelly of their daughter and now deprived even of the chance to see the man who led the police to her body charged with her murder.